Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Today, I'm gonna to talk with my friend Adrian to talk about accents, and he's another accent coach. So we are gonna, we're gonna talk about sounds and different samples of those sounds to see, to see what that's like, to kind of get a feel for it. So, hey, there he is. Hi, Adrian, how are you? Hey, good, how are you? Great, great to see you. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Yay, where, where are you at today? Where is your body physically? I am in Poland. I'm in Krakow, Poland. I'm actually uh, quite commonly here, uh, mm -hmm. but it's my last week for now, for the, for the winter season. Awesome. You know, it's getting a bit too cold. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. It seems like, it seems like you travel a lot. I see a lot of your Instagram posts, and you're always, you've always got these great videos on location. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. I, I like doing that. It's, uh, it's, quite, uh, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I do move around. I'm usually in Central Europe, but I think next year I'm gonna try something new. I'm gonna go mm -hmm. to Mexico actually in uh, in in February. I think you're at in Mexico. <gasps> yeah, you have to visit me. I'm in Guadalajara, so if you, you can go to Mexico City on the east side, then if you come out to the west side, you can come and visit me in Guadalajara. That would be okay. awesome. Okay, I'm probably gonna stay in Yucatan. I'm okay. I'm a little bit. It's my first time. It'll be my first time in Mexico, and I'm like a bit nervous because I heard it's a bit dangerous. So I'm gonna stay in like the safer areas. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe give me some recommendations. I mean, is any place dangerous? Yeah, there's some hype. There's some truth. Like, talk to me later about it. We'll we'll make you a fun yeah, itinerary. Sure. I've been all throughout the Yucatan. It's it's fabulous. Like, I will I will make sure you have a wonderful trip. And if you can't come visit me, that's okay. We'll get together another time. So. So tell us, tell us a little bit about like who you are and kind of like your story and, and what you do for people who don't know you today. Okay. Well, I'm Adrian. And my name is Adrian and I teach uh, accent reduction or accent modification uh, as well as pronunciation training, which are slightly different, although I think not many people know of the, the difference, which I'll explain later. Mm -hmm. um, I really uh, like languages. Growing up, I would listen to uh, languages and accents and just um, try to pick out what's different about them and how they differ. Uh, I, I'm from Hong Kong, but my parents are American and uh, I grew up, well, in Hong Kong and then I went to the US. Um, I went to an international school and I had, it was actually a British international school, like a British style international school. So most of my teachers were British, uh, a lot of Australians as well. And then I would listen to like how my dad sounds. He's from Maryland. Um, and how my teachers sounded from all parts of the UK and then Australia, and just like kind of like, like listen to how things are slightly different. And hear how you know the Australians say oh, and then like mm -hmm. the uh, the British would often say oh, and then mm -hmm. depending where you are in the US, you might say oh as well or oh. Uh, mm -hmm. So that sort of stuff is very interesting. And of course, I also had my uh, my my family spoke three different types of uh, Chinese languages as well. So that was interesting seeing mm -hmm. the similarities. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I've now, I'm just like kind of like learning languages, but also helping students from those language backgrounds um, to improve their pronunciation and, and accent in English, um, particularly if I know something about their language. And right now I'm focusing a lot on Slavic languages because I'm, you know, in the Slavic part of Europe, I've, uh, I started with Russian. Uh, now I've been living in Poland for two years, so my Polish is better than my Russian. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I studied, I, I learned some Croatian when I was living in Croatia for like four months and I was in Czechia for like a month and I learned some Czech, which is, you know, fairly similar to Polish, but mm -hmm. uh, different mm -hmm. in its own mm -hmm. way. So that's me. I like to use different types of, like my knowledge of different types of languages to help my students and make more uh, material specific to their backgrounds to teach them. Yeah, I think I think the more we, we are on both sides of it, on the teaching side and the learning side, the more we can be helpful, you know, on both sides of it too. Yeah. yeah, I think I think that's something that a lot of people overlook when they're looking for somebody to help. Somebody just asked in the comments, I want to find a friend to practice speaking. Um, and then there is there something missing? Would anyone I think it's I think it's would anyone maybe like to help, like to join? There's a lot of like like partnerships, language exchanges, things like that out there, which can be really helpful. You know, if you don't want to go to an accent coach or pronunciation spe specialist or something like that, then there's definitely a lot of other things out there. So when you started, I bring this up because when you started, you were very much on your own, right? And your interest 
was there. That's kind of like how I was. I was pretty nerdy as a kid. I would like, I would like buy flashcards at garage sales and I would just kind of like flip through the flashcards, but I lived in upstate New York, which was far from anything, you know? So I, I feel like, I feel like we have that same thing where it, we kind of propelled ourselves, but then once we learned about it, maybe helping other people is, is also like a, a big part of that. I think there's a connection there. That's really, really, really important. So for you now, what's your, what's your big, passion about accent and phonology and and some of the all the different languages that you've gone through yourself and also maybe people that you've helped along the way tell us a little bit more about that about your passions among those i mean i think i just uh ever since i was a kid because of my background my multilingual background i just loved languages and i just liked looking at the um the similarities and differences like uh between the chinese languages you can predict from one, uh, like you can take a word and sort of predict how it sounds in a different language mm -hmm. based on rules, which is, yeah. you know, um, uh, phonological rules or like um, that kind of go through that how the languages have changed through time. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can sort of do that with, with accents as well, right? So um, I think, I'm not completely certain, but uh, from what I know about Spanish, uh, you might have, for example, um, well, the easiest one is with European Spanish, you have those th sounds, which mm -hmm. are all merged into the mm -hmm. s sounds. Mm -hmm. They have distinction in, yeah. in, uh, in the Iberian Peninsula, but mm -hmm. they ha just have ceseo, uh, or mm -hmm. sometimes ceseo, I think, in like mm -hmm. parts of South America. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. in Mexican Spanish, I think they have like, they kind of drop the, the E's at the end, like E-S, they just don't have the E anymore. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm not completely sure. Yeah. Um, so that sort of stuff is fascinating to me yeah. and, um, you know, uh, how, how different words, like, uh, how you can predict the pronunciation of uh, one word in another accent based on these rules, or maybe you can't because it has jumped word classes, like with, with the aw words in like Northeast, I think Middle Atlantic and uh, American accents, you get things like dog instead mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. um, which you would think would it's the same sound as like thought, but mm -hmm. in British English it's thought and dog, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hot dog, in yeah. like you bet this whole it's called the cot cot merger where yeah like and like you said I think it's really interesting. You see these patterns, you think you can predict them patterns through time, patterns in geography, patterns in all kinds of things. You think you can predict them, but then people in language just kind of surprise you sometimes. There are these changes that you never would have predicted. You know, I was this morning, I was looking at this video about um, STR, str, have you seen this video? Str versus tr, right? Oh. Strong versus yeah. strong, let's say, right? Yeah. And, and he mentioned in the video, he thought there was something about maybe young versus old, but I don't think that's the end of the story. I don't think it's the, just that older people are saying str and younger people are saying str. You see what I mean? So I think, I think there's just yeah. a lot of conjecture that's related and there's a lot of patterns yeah. that we can find. And you mentioned earlier that you were gonna talk about the difference between, let's say for you, like wh what is accent, right? What is, what is phonology? Maybe what is pronunciation? How does all that fit in? So can you clarify how you think about those things and how you differentiate them? Sure. So um, I, I always say that I teach pronunciation training and accent modification training as well. And I differentiate accent and pronunciation in mm. the following way. Um, so actually, let me backtrack a little bit because I have to describe um, what the difference is. The, um, and the difference between the two is something to do with phonemes. Phonemes, mm. uh, for, for the watchers who don't, uh, might not understand, are kind of like sounds in a, sounds, sounds in a language that have meaning. So if you change mm -hmm. the phoneme, it'll change the meaning. Uh, you might change it to another word. So like in English, you have uh, la and ra, and you might say, um, you might want to say the word led, but if you said the, it as red, then it's a completely different word. But mm -hmm. uh, because L and R, la and ra are different phonemes in English. But or maybe it, one word, one of those sets doesn't exist, like led. Well, led actually does exist. But maybe, maybe you, you do it wrong, and that other word doesn't exist. Or maybe you do it wrong let's say wrong you're doing the sound you didn't want to do and then and then it's actually another word that does exist like you just mentioned like back and bag for example yeah. right so just yeah, exactly to give a so, little more example mm -hmm. exactly exactly like um, bag and back sorry <laughs> i have a little cough but that's a good thing about <laughs> teaching online is that you can't spread the germs but, <laughs> yeah. um, 
But yeah, so those are phonemes. Uh, but if you were Japanese and you said sayonara, if you were speaking Japanese and you said sayonara instead of sayonara, that doesn't change the meaning because mm -hmm. those are not phonemes in Japanese. So when I teach pronunciation, I'm trying to help my students um, pronounce the phonemes in a way that's understandable, that's co comprehensible, that people understand you. You might still be, uh, like people might hear you and still know that you're a non-native speaker, but uh, they will understand you because you mm -hmm. have comprehensible and pretty good pronunciation. So mm -hmm. that's like the, the level before accent modification because mm -hmm. in, uh, with accent, this is how you speak. Uh, it's not whether or not you're understood. Um, uh, with accent training, I'm trying to help the student get, uh, speak in the way that fits their target group uh, that they want to mm -hmm. get into. Like Usually it's like the native group. They want to sound mm -hmm. more native and less uh, mm -hmm. foreign. So um, I help... <coughs> I help them improve the way that they speak. They may already be very comprehensible. They may, might have no problems with uh, communication, mm -hmm. but they might still be, uh, might still sound non-native. So that's mm -hmm. the difference between pronunciation and accent training for me is the, mm -hmm. whether or not um, you can say the, the phonemes in a comprehensible way, and then whether or not you can uh, sound like the group that you want to identify with. Yeah, do people understand you? Do people have trouble understanding what you're saying, the words that are coming out of your mouth? Or do people understand you, but you don't sound the way you want to sound? Do you not have this voice that kind of reflects you as a person or what you want? Yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a big difference. And that can be just enough sometimes for people, I think, to say like, oh, oh, wait, people do understand me. It's, it's about me, right? It's not maybe about that. And it, I think that really helps a person to know kind of where they're at. Because before that, some people are like, oh, I'm just not good enough, or I always make all these mistakes and nobody understands me. And maybe people are understanding you, but you have a, a certain feeling of maybe not enough confidence or something like that. Really good, really good distinction there. Absolutely. So what about some of the other languages or, or backgrounds that people might come to you from or other languages that you've seen, right? Some, can you give us some example of how, some examples of how a first language might influence or create some of these errors or mistakes when somebody's speaking in English? Definitely, definitely. So um, uh, a common example and um, for, let's, say, let's start with Romance language speakers like Spanish and Portuguese speakers because I have a lot of um, Spanish and Portuguese speakers, and I imagine um, you do as well, probably mm -hmm. as uh, students. Mm -hmm. um, one common thing that they don't uh, do, and is part of what is you know kind of a Latin accent, is uh, aspiration. And this is a fancy name for the the phenomenon of a puff of air that happens after certain consonants in English, mm -hmm. namely mm -hmm. pa, ta, in certain situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't happen in all situations. It's a kind of a, it's a phonological rule and it has, it applies sometimes, but not always. But to illustrate what it sounds like, for example, if we have the uh, sentence, I have a pet cat in English, mm -hmm. I have a pet cat, there is aspiration after the P and, uh, and the P and the K. Uh, because it named Tim. Oh yeah, I have a pet cat named Tim. So that has aspiration after the P and and come. Mm -hmm. um, a Spanish speaker or a Latin language speaker, because those languages don't have this aspiration rule, this phonological rule, they might say, I have a pet cat named Tim. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so you can hear, you might be able to hear the difference. Uh, in English, it's pet cat named Tim. Uh, and then in the Latin accent, it might be a pet cat named Tim. So it holds um, back a little bit. Yeah, it holds back a little bit and you don't get that puff of air. And I don't know about you, but I always keep a little piece of paper kind of near me and right. That's a little trick that a lot of people can do to see oh, if they're yeah. creating enough air there. Right. So and interesting how you mentioned Spanish and Portuguese. I don't know if you have a lot of pe people from Portugal versus from Brazil. I get a lot of Brazilians actually. And also nasalization can be a thing just between the two of them. Right. They might share certain features from their back, different background languages that make are creating the same mistake or error, but they also might differ among oh, them sure. too. Uh -huh. For they sure. Have that same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I've never actually had a Portuguese like um, from Portugal like uh, mm -hmm. as a student, but I, uh, theoretically, I know that they don't say things like um, mm -hmm. like in, in Portuguese, European Portuguese, they say probably different or like mm -hmm. cidad mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, and one thing that I have, one material, oh, well, one exercise I have um, in my Portuguese material 
uh, for Portuguese speaking students uh, from Brazil is a lesson on not doing this. I, I think it's called palatalization um, yad ko coalescence or something, uh, where in when they speak English and they say things like different, they often say different, or mm -hmm. uh, we're on the same team instead of team. Mm. And so the Brazilian speakers, Brazilian Portuguese speakers will do this, but the European Portuguese speakers theoretically won't do this, and I assume they won't, but I, mm -hmm. I don't have empirical data, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure they won't do this because they don't do that in, uh, in European Portuguese. Mm -hmm. They don't say uh, diferente or uh, quente. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Oh, I don't know if you just noticed the comment that Azdruval sent down below. Azdruval, hi, from Guatemala. He's oh. another excellent coach hey. that I've talked to a lot. Yes. It was so sweet of you to say that. Thank you so much. We'll have to have, we should do some kind of group call, actually. That would be a lot of fun. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. It works, like if you can have three people on the I, I think maximum of four, but I feel like the pictures would be really small there. So, yeah, we'll, oh, okay. we'll, we'll think about how to do that. Um, What was I going to say? Yeah, so the differences between and among the first language background is going to influence what mistakes you're going to get to come up. And if you can find somebody who can, let's go back to that idea of having just a language partner, right? Language partners are great, but they might not know all of these little things, or they might hear something and they might say, oh yeah, you have this accent, but they don't know why, they don't know yeah. how, they don't know when, they don't know what to do about it, right? So I think it's really worth if nothing else, just like following people like us that are on Instagram or as Druval as well to, to just see what they know and how to supplement, you know, those things. Even if Definitely. people don't want to work with us, you know, directly, there's so much information. I know you put out a lot of content and I put out a lot of content too, really just to help people, right? Just to help people find out what, what's going on inside their mouth to get their ear a little bit better, you know, things like that. And um, yeah. I want to say that right now I'm doing a, how should I call it? A, it's a challenge on Telegram right now. That's the thing that I'm doing right now besides my other clubs and things. That's my new thing. What are you working on right now that people can get involved in? Um, I'm, I'm experimenting right now. Um, uh, recently, I tried, I created a few Facebook groups uh, where I um, encourage people to join. Uh, a lot of my students and some of my friends have joined. Um, things like uh, American English for Russian speakers, American English for Polish speakers. I have mm -hmm. it for Polish, Russian, Spanish, Portuguese, and for Chinese speakers. Um, and I'm experimenting because I'm still pretty new to like this social marketing stuff, mm -hmm. uh, social media marketing stuff, but I like teaching and I like helping people. Uh, but I'm, I, I repost some of my com uh, content from Instagram there, but like analyze it in a sort of, um, in a way that's more targeted towards speakers of those languages. So mm -hmm. uh, for example, recently I had, I think yesterday I posted an, uh, a video on the difference between ooh and mm -hmm. oh in mm -hmm. English. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the, uh, when I posted onto the Russian speaking uh, group, I uh, illustrated that in Russian, you actually have that those two sounds. They're not yeah. phonemes, yeah. Uh, but they are what they're called allophones. Allophones yeah. are different variations of the phoneme. Uh, mm -hmm. When you pronounce it, it might change a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so when you say in, in Russian, you have u and o, uh, mm -hmm. but they don't kind of perceive it. They perceive it as the same, but they actually physically pronounce it as differently. So when mm -hmm. you say things like the visual, mm -hmm. uh, that's unstressed and it becomes yeah. o. And when you say a do. It mm -hmm. ooh, has mm -hmm. an ooh, like mm -hmm. very similar to English, but uh, when they say a visual, because the, mm -hmm. the ooh is unstressed, it becomes ooh. And so mm -hmm. they do have it, and, uh, but it's not uh, perceived as different. Uh, so I posted that onto the group, I analyzed it that way, and I'm trying to do more of this stuff. I'm, I want, I'd like people to like comment and like um, maybe comment questions there or like, uh, or just mm -hmm. um, you know, join and see uh, if it helps them uh, because it's more specific to them and that's something I'm yeah. working on. Um, yeah. And I also mm -hmm. posted uh, a question there like uh, on what topics they might want me to cover because I'm trying to release, I'm, I think I'm releasing a, um, an accent modification course for Russian speakers um, next year. Um, nice. Yeah. So I'm trying to do more like targeted things. I think that's mm -hmm. my, uh, you know, the cool thing that I do. Yeah. Yay! Congratulations! This social media game is tough, 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 oh, and I tough. feel like yeah, it's really it's difficult. It's annoying. It's 
constant, but it's it's the best way to reach people because that's where everybody is, you know? Yeah, so keep going. I know it's difficult, but you can, you can totally do it. You're gonna reach all the people that need your excellent advice because you're really awesome at that. So tell us more about some other backgrounds. Um, you mentioned, so we, we were talking about more romance languages, but what else? You said some Slavic languages. Can you give us some oh. examples about how their first languages might influence how they're speaking English and causing those, those mistakes or errors? Sure, I, I, I love Slavic languages. I'm, I'm trying to uh, learn a lot of them and like they're so, they're, they're so similar but also kind of different. But um, one example, one very simple example, and I'll go into another more complicated example is uh, in Polish, um, and I think, yeah, in Russian as well, um, the sequence of N, N, and uh, E together often become palatalized and you get this kind of like ni sound, mm. uh, which sounds a bit off and native speakers of English might not notice what exactly is off, but they'll hear mm -hmm. that there's something there. Um, yeah. My Polish students always say, I need, I need, mm -hmm. instead of I need. Mm -hmm. And so Russian speaking students do this as well because when you have a, a soft vowel, Mm -hmm. after like a consonant it causes a, the consonant to become soft which mm -hmm. means which is like the slavic term for uh palatalized yeah. palatalized is this yeah kind of sound when your uh -huh. tongue goes up towards the palate yeah. mm -hmm. um and then it comes like nie instead of mm -hmm. need so mm -hmm. in polish you can't say knee that would be like an english accent yeah. uh, like knee instead of knee mm -hmm. so they're all saying i need i need um mm -hmm. and um yeah, that's, a, that's one example. Another example that I, I figured out last year, and I was really happy about this, and because I never, I, I kind of did my own research. I was like, I heard it from my students. I've been mm -hmm. teaching for a couple of years, and yeah. I heard from my students, they're doing things like saying, uh, do you have Facebook? Facebook, yeah. or I took, I took Flixbus, oh, happy birthday. Uh -huh. And they, they kind of um, voice certain constants, but not all constants, before other constants. And I, uh, what I discovered is that in front of, obstruent constants. So these are certain types of constants that have more um, more um, friction, I think. No, yeah, friction. Mm -hmm. In front of voiced obstruent constants, other voice obstru voiceless obstruent constants become voiced. Oh. So that's why when you get words like Facebook in English, we have s and b together. The b is voiced and it's obstruent, and the s is voiceless and it's mm -hmm. obstruent. It becomes z. So mm -hmm. they say Facebook. And mm -hmm. this happens in Russian in words like prosba. Prosba, it's spelled with an S, it should be pros and then mm -hmm. ba. But if you put mm -hmm. it together, it becomes prosba. Mm -hmm. Same thing in, in, um, in Polish, you get prosba, prosba. Or words like lich plus ba becomes lichba. Mm -hmm. And then words like tak, także, it's not także, it's także. Mm -hmm. becomes mm -hmm. a, the A becomes a G sound. And this is something that's kind of subtle. Uh, but does happen in Slavic languages and I've noticed it everywhere. It's really cool. Uh, and it also happens in, uh, I think, a similar phenomenon happens in Spanish, but it's not exactly the same. Words mm -hmm. like uh, desde, desde mm -hmm. has an yeah. S, but it's not really yeah. desde, it's desde. Mm -hmm. It becomes mm -hmm. a kind of a Z sound. And in Portuguese, like, um, wait, uh, esbarra, esbarra. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure if that's a word. Uh, or what it means. I'm sure it's a word, but it's not, yeah. it's spelled with an S, but it's not pronounced as an S. It's like Ezba, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So yeah. it's a similar phenomenon. Yeah, I think what you're describing here is how, how we have sounds and we say them a certain way, but they're also influenced by other sounds and often clusters, consonant clusters yeah. that kind of like that the, here's that thing again, like you're like, oh, I wouldn't predict that, but it's really just that humans are lazy, our mouths are our muscles, and you know, sometimes we want to relax, and so we do the easiest thing often. You yeah. know, and it's funny that you mentioned voicing because this month that's what my challenge is all about. It's all about voicing because if you come from a language where that, I guess it's not a merger, but that, that like not assimilation, but it's a it's, it's, a, it's the affectation of one to the other, right? It's this thing kind of rubbing off to the next thing. How do we uncouple that? That's really hard unless you can explain to somebody, oh, it's happening right here. You have to, you know, figure out your vocal folds and, and know how to turn them off and on and when to do that, you know, to sound more clear. And like you said before, maybe it's a matter of this is the correct word or I'm saying a different word and I'm being misunderstood or I just want to sound a different way. Right? I don't want to sound like that. I want to sound like this, you know? So those yeah. are really good examples. By the way, yeah. hi, Tabitha. I saw Tabby joined us. She's another accent coach that we know. So if, if you 
are also, if you're an accent coach that's watching this either live right now or as a replay, I also have an accent coach academy or accent teaching academy for people who want to teach this stuff, but they don't know how. Maybe they've, they've figured some stuff out on their own. Maybe they're just really interested or maybe they're English teachers who, who want to kind of pivot into this business, let's say, and they don't know what to do with that. So if you're somebody who's in that position, if you teach English, but you're not really into it anymore and you want to turn into a coach or pronunciation coach or an accent coach, then I have a special kind of club for that little academy where I teach people how to teach, how to teach accents specifically. And you've done a lot like I've done, you know, just like you're listening and you're like, oh, that's, oh, that's an, oh, oh, that happened again. Oh, when, when is this happening? Why is this happening to me? The when and the why and figuring all that out, that problem solving, that's the really interesting part. And when you can explain that to somebody else and say, Here, here's why this is happening, that light that kind of goes on, they say, oh my God, it's not all the time. It's, it's a certain pattern. Maybe it's not me, it's the language. And I can like figure this out and I can control that. I love that empowerment that people get. And I love to see that kind of like light go on in their head. Yeah, for you know? sure. Yeah. It's, not even just, it's, it's not just my students as well, I actually, I somehow managed to talk about this with my friends, but they're always quite, kind of interested. You know, they're like, yeah. I, I, for my Polish friends, I, I tell them, did you know that, you know, this word, <laughs> like it has this, it's not, but it's not pronounced this way. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. And they're like, oh my God, it is. And it's really, it's a lot of fun. Uh, like, yeah. uh, Occupational <laughs> hazards. Like none of my yeah. friends will watch videos with me because I'll just sit there kind of picking things apart unconsciously. It just, like, it just comes out. I can't help it. I promise. But yeah, I, I'm really like obsessed with this yeah. kind of stuff too. So I'm, I'm really I, glad. I, I remember one time I was um, I was just having dinner with, with my parents and then like uh, my mother said something wrong and I corrected her. I was like, oh, whoops, <laughs> I'm not in class right now. So yeah. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes, oh God, I like what as Druval was just saying in the comments below. Or, below, he said that being being the being a non-native speaker coming into the language has helped his students. That's one of the best <laughs> things. A lot of a lot of people maybe I shouldn't say this as like a native speaker myself. There's this nativism I'm sure you're aware of where like people will come to a native speaker because they're a native speaker, right? But that doesn't mean that they know how to teach. Sure, I find yeah. that the best teachers, the best people who can teach are the people who've learned it themselves because they, they know the problems that they themselves have faced. They've seen it from the outside. So I think, I think we can say non-native speakers are definitely the best teachers and coaches for sure. Yes. What's your, what's your favorite thing then about, about all of this? Like if you could share one more passion to, to people, what, what do you think that, other people would find interesting that you love. Um, you mean re regarding uh, accent uh, training? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's hard to pick. I don't know. I just like <laughs> I just like languages. I, I really like. <laughs> I love. I love. Um, I don't know. It helps me. Oh, the the coolest thing for me is sometimes I I speak and people are like, "Oh wow, did you live there for a while?" Or like, um, or mm. why do you sound so like good? Like I I remember last year at um a new year's party i was at um uh, i was at a house party and there was um, a russian speaker there i spoke with him in russian and then mm -hmm. um and then he said that i have almost no accent in russian mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um like and, and another a belarusian actually asked me if i had lived in a russian-speaking place and um and uh that's a great feeling when people uh, like mistake you for having lived there or like even being a native in it yeah, uh, yeah. of course my grammar is not good so that gives me away for sure <laughs> uh, but but, it's but yeah the feeling. I, I, it's the feeling like like what we were talking about earlier and i see that mark dallas just joined us hey mark mark is also he's a he's a dialect coach so he teaches people dialects for stage and screen i think it comes back to that feeling whether it's our own feeling of like accomplishment or having a compliment you know something like that to, to the feeling that an audience or a viewer might get in seeing somebody else perform an accent that sounds really natural, really authentic. It's, it's the feeling I think we're going after. Like you said earlier, there's two levels. Comprehension, right? Are you getting your point across? And then how do I wanna be, how do I wanna be perceived? How do I wanna feel? How do I wanna sound? It's that second layer I think that gives us a lot of joy, both as like yeah. speakers and in, for me, at least helping other people to kind of arrive at that, right? Like, like you said, sure. what a myth, what a myth. Oh, live in another country and your language and your accent will be great. Myth, right? Huge myth. You don't need to live in another country. Some of the most amazing speakers that I've met 
never left their home country, right? And so and yeah. they've overcome a lot of obstacles that way too. But I think it's it's just really amazing like what we can do these days and the fact that now you're now you're giving out a course and, and getting it reaching out to people in social media, you're gonna be able to help a lot more yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Like what you said about like uh, living in another country, people think, Oh, you live in another country and you'll you'll be able to sound native. But it's not mm -hmm. necessarily not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. You you'll kind of um, yeah, you'll learn faster, you'll learn the grammar, you'll become good at speaking because um, you will become good enough, I should say, because you, um, in order to improve, you need some sort of feedback, uh, any system needs some sort of feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're beginning with a language, you're very bad at grammar, people will misunderstand you, that's the feedback. Mm -hmm. and you'll be forced to improve your grammar and your pronunciation. But then mm -hmm. you get to a level where you are good enough to be understood, and yeah. then you may or may not improve. To improve further, to sound more native, and to be better at, like, to get to, like, that C2 level in, in grammar and, and speaking, mm -hmm. you'll have to really... Um, uh, you'll really have to do deliberate practice because uh, you'll no longer have that external feedback of people misunderstanding you to mm -hmm. force you to improve and you'll have to mm -hmm. force yourself to improve. Mm -hmm. And then, so that's what I often tell my students, like you can't, I mean, some people are like, they do naturally yeah. just deliberately try to practice and notice things, but other mm -hmm. people don't. And lots yeah. of the people that don't, they come to me and they, and I can help them with that because I point out those things, mm -hmm. uh, like what they need to focus. And I, I, I point out, did you know that you said this this way and it should be this way? Because mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's, yeah, like you said, it is kind of a myth. Um, it's not all, it's usually not true, but sometimes it can, uh, yeah. some students are better, some students like more naturally better at yeah. like, uh, forcing themselves to improve, but mm. others are not, so. Exactly, yeah. yeah, there's a natural ability there that you can kind of cultivate as well, or maybe you have an interest, you know, like like we do, we're just like really interested in it, so we pay more attention to it, you know, or some people are just, like you said, naturally better at it. But for most people, they're gonna get some explicit feedback of like a look, you know, kind of glazing over or something like that, and some kind of explicit like, hmm, something's not right here. But then very few people can get on point the, I'm sorry, I should have said implicit, implicit feedback. Very people can, few people can get on point, specified, timely, you know, quality feedback that actually helps them. And that's, that's really hard. I have a hard time with that in Spanish, you know, living here. Luckily, I'm interested. Luckily, these are yeah. things that I can look up myself, you know, but most people, most people know, you know, they, they, they finish at that, like, I'm understood level, which is totally fine, right? Which is totally absolutely fine, yeah. fine. But if, but it's not fine if that's not where you want to be, right? So, okay. yeah. So I think that there's people like us that can help. And w what are some some of your final thoughts? Do you want to give any more specific examples? Do you want to do you want to talk a little bit more about some things that have happened to you or some of your students? We have a little bit extra time here. We didn't talk much about Latin or Chinese yet. If you want to give some examples there too. Oh, um, okay. Well, um, an example that um, for of uh, uh, a Chinese sort of accent in English is something that um, is not really technically sound. It's something to do with like rhythm and uh, and I guess pitch and intonation. Uh -huh. So uh, Chinese languages are famous for having tones and tones are kind of phonemic. They're kind of like phonemes in Chinese because they differentiate meaning. So you have to be really um, deliberate in how you pronounce the, the pitch that indicates the tone of the language, mm -hmm. uh, of the mm -hmm. syllable, because it can mm -hmm. change the meaning of the word. But English, because it doesn't have tone, it's not phonemic in English, it can, it's more, uh, you can change it without, um, without changing the meaning that much, uh, mm -hmm. or at all. And mm -hmm. uh, when Chinese speakers speak English, they often they often incorporate a sort of tone into every single syllable. So they might say, um, when the weather is cold, I wear, I wear thick jackets. And so mm -hmm. kind of, you can hear this kind of a, um, a tone incorporated mm -hmm. into every single syllable because the speaker speaker's native tongue uh, requires them to do that. Mm -hmm. But in English, we don't do that. We might say, uh, when the weather is cold, I wear thick jackets. And so you can mm -hmm. feel that the intonation kind of mm -hmm. is more, uh, it's not that strict. Whereas yeah. in China, you would have like, when the weather is cold or yeah. when the weather uh, and another thing related to that is that the, um, Chinese is one of the more syllable timed languages where uh, each syllable is kind of the same amount of time. Whereas in English, you have, um, you have kind of a, a, like different type of uh, rhythm. You have mm -hmm. longer and shorter uh, mm -hmm. syllables depending on whether it's stressed or not. And this is actually kind of cool. I've, I've actually 
told English teachers this, and it's one thing that's kind of neglected in the uh, in teaching English in Chinese speaking areas. Uh, mm -hmm. English teachers don't really know about this, yeah. um, but it's it doesn't <laughs> doesn't really affect the understanding unless it's super obvious but mm -hmm. you can hear that uh, a chinese speaker might say when the weather is cold i wear thick jackets as opposed mm -hmm. to when the weather is cold i wear thick jackets mm -hmm. and that's um lots of languages are and that's a that's a common thing for different types of languages like spanish speakers spanish is also fairly syllable time maybe not as much as in uh, as chinese mm -hmm. polish is more um syllable timed than other types of uh, than, than english and uh, much more so than Russian, even though it's the same kind of um, still like kind of uh, a language family. And I actually use this example to teach. This is another thing that I do that I use examples uh, of of accents of other languages in those languages to explain certain um, topics. So I often tell my Polish students uh, if they want to sound more native in English, uh, they have to make the syllables more longer and shorter. And they can I tell them imagine a Russian accented or Ukrainian accented Polish, they might have certain longer and shorter sounds. Mm -hmm. Instead of like saying, I mean, I mean, they'll say, mm -hmm. uh, they'll kind of have this kind of like um, long and short that's not the typical uh, way to do it in Polish. So that's, I like to do that. Mm -hmm. I like to do examples from different languages to illustrate points and use contrast to really like, yeah. What, what, what they can see, what they might notice in other things, they might not notice in themselves. Like if, exactly. you, if you look at the difference between like Ukrainian and Russian speakers, right? You, it's, it's all in the music, right? It's all, it's all in the prosody of the language. It, there's, some, there's some pronunciation differences to be sure, but it's also like, like, like well, what Azrul is saying too, it's very intentional. And also we, we say, oh, there's like, there's syllable time languages, there's, there's these two buckets of languages. But then as you mentioned, there's also continuums mm -hmm. within those groups, right? Like people don't really realize it's not just this yeah. or this, but within that you might notice the different accents um, in, within your own language, right? Like there's oh, for accents sure. in Spanish too. Like they might be able to recognize that. And then you can say, ah, ah, you see that thing that you already noticed? relate that to what you're doing you yeah. know in english so i find that to be very yeah. helpful i was i was just watching a video yesterday and uh um there was a speaker and i th i knew she was uh, north american but then she said something it didn't sound quite uh right and i was like mm -hmm. hmm, maybe she's canadian and she was mm -hmm. canadian and mm -hmm. the thing is like in, even though uh i was trying to guess between california and canada and, and um uh those areas but uh, in Canada, this is about the caught caught merger. Uh, yep. That class of words, uh, when they say things like "dog" in California, yeah, uh, they say like "dog," uh -huh. but in, uh, and they will say uh, or they will say "caught" and "caught" like the mm -hmm. same as opposed to "caught" and "caught" as mm -hmm. in uh, New York. I do. Yeah. They'll, say, they'll, say caught, uh, they'll say "caught." They'll say "caught" and "caught," mm -hmm. uh, but the Canadians will say "caught" and "caught," so it's slightly more rounded. Yeah, it's just slightly a different. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then another thing is like, yeah, it, it's all continua. Um, they, they, uh, there's a vowel called the schwa, which is very common in English. The reduced schwa. Vowel. What's what's that? What's no? I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I was learning Romanian when I was in Romania, and they have a schwa, but the schwa is not exactly the same as in English. We have a, and they have like a, oh, and it's it's a bit more back. Mm -hmm. So they have like. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly the words because I because I'm not good at Romanian, but I think they have a word like maro, mm -hmm. and it's like um, apple or something. Uh, but that a with the um, that <coughs> sorry mark, <laughs> it's not a a, uh, it's a all uh, mm. like it's more back, mm -hmm. but it's still schwa. It's it's a yeah. little bit different. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. these like little differences. That's the really really advanced stuff in accent. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was just gonna make a quick confession. Is that you know, we were talking about the awe and the awe, the cop, cop merger, the awe and the awe, and they're like, oh yeah, and there's a third one. I don't even teach it usually. Like, I don't even teach the three back there. I just teach two. And then if somebody can hear it, then we discuss it. But I usually Which don't- Which third one are we talking about? The, between cot and cot, I teach awe and I teach ah, and I don't teach the more rounded version. I just don't even- You mean the it. British one? Yes, the exactly. Pop. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't well, teach it unless it comes up. If it comes up, then we'll talk about it. But usually I don't, 
I don't set out and say, here are all the yeah. vowels, right? I don't usually include it in there, but of course, schwa, yeah. Definitely. Are there any uh, North American accents that have it? Because I, I feel like there's Boston. Well, Boston. I, I don't know if there's one congealed, let's say, accent that where most of the speakers would do that most of the time, but there, I've, I've heard it. I've definitely heard it. And I'm, and I'm thinking, yeah. is that a one-off, right? Is that that person's like, specific idiolect yeah. and is that something that they picked up somewhere so yeah. people say it i don't know that i would say it's in any one accent besides okay that. i think I mean? it's i think boston has a different yeah. thing oh, uh, and some yeah. of the other ones but like but besides um, that yeah yeah mm -hmm. but i mean uh when i was talking about the canadian one they, they yeah. do have it as that that phoneme ah mm -hmm. uh, the unrounded one yeah. but it sounds more like ah, like mm -hmm. ah, father yeah and ah. i and, and for anybody like who's there listening or as a replay, like I, my, vowels are my favorite thing to discuss. Oh, I yeah. love vowels because I feel like there are so many variables, you know, yep. in there. You've got like, just how wide is your jaw? Yeah, and just exactly. how much space, it's like just maybe your jaw is really wide, you don't have any space there. Yeah, and maybe like, how how flat, how far how far forward is your tongue really and what exactly is it touching you know and what are your lips doing and what are those co that combination that just makes a yeah. huge number of variables there that can make things sound just a little bit different and when somebody starts to hear that difference I'm like yes right they're getting good you know and when they oh, can hear yeah. that difference and they can ask those questions I'm like oh yeah like you you're ready to teach yourself you know at this yeah. point I had so, a student who was uh, she's an English teacher and she's uh, for, um, she's Ukrainian uh, She's pretty good. Um, she has been mistaken as na a native a couple of mm -hmm. times. It's starting mm -hmm. to happen a few more times. But um, she told me the other day that she's getting quite good at differentiating, uh, you know, British accents from uh, American accents. And now she wants to understand what Australian accents are. Yeah. And so I was really excited to teach her that because I was mm -hmm. like, or teach her the difference. I'm not teaching her how to say it, but like just to recognize it. Yeah. But Australian is interesting because they don't have O, they have O, they uh -huh. don't have Ooh, they have ooh. They ooh, only do. have the diphthong, yeah. It's like everything is like um like an impure vowel. It's not just like it's like ooh and uh -huh. oh and yeah. Uh, it's e. a combination. It's a glide. It's yeah. like, but it's a very specific glide. Yeah, yeah def definitely. And like, how far do they step and how quickly? Yeah, to me, all that's really interesting. I'm sure we could talk for days and days, and I'm sure we will. <laughs> by the way, but. What are your what are your kind of closing thoughts? What do you feel like you haven't gotten a chance to say yet that you want to say, and that could be something important to you or something that you think should be important to other people? Like, what do you what do you want to finish talking about? Mm, um, I'm not quite sure. I, I I think I talked about most of the stuff I wanted to talk about, but I hope you I hope the for the watchers watching you enjoy uh, you enjoyed this topic. Um, if you if you want to um, learn more. Um, you can follow me on on uh, Instagram or or well here links, uh, links up there yeah yeah the links are up there uh, accent amazing on most things uh, mm -hmm. YouTube is also at accent amazing um, mm -hmm. and I, I use this name because it's like I help you make your accent amazing uh -huh, that's uh -huh, uh -huh. It. So, yeah and it's like oh I hope man, you enjoy that handle is stolen yeah. I can't I can't use it now I'm just kidding yeah you because you are amazing I think I think your passion your knowledge your background really really makes that that makes makes you you and it's and it's fantastic and i want to see if we can schedule something else as well sure. um and and mark said mark said dip dip thong nation i like for it. australia dip nation. Yeah. yeah for australia i like it and um and yeah we should we should do something maybe with other people together you said you're on you're on youtube i'm just starting on youtube maybe we can do a live over there i don't know if they do the split screen stuff too i think that they do maybe we can do maybe we can do sure. a call sometime but yeah i sure. want to i want to convert as many people into this like cult of phonetics and accent work as possible oh, yeah. so the more people we can get interested in and into this i think i think the more fun it's gonna be oh by the way let me just mention too then in that case i do have a community for people out there i know not everybody knows discord but if you know discord it's kind of like reddit plus kind of like Skype all or Zoom all together. Like you can do calls there, you can do chats there. It's, it's awesome. If you don't know Discord, check my links above and I have a free community for people like us. People are, people are here. Um, people are here on my Discord because they're interested, you know, or they want to learn. So I have coaches there. I have, I have students there. Everybody's there. So join me on Discord. As far as I know, besides the enthusiasm for the podcast, it's the only other Discord server that's related to that. So if Discord is scary for you, there's also a little tutorial about how to get into Discord. 
but yeah, so those are the things that I've go got going on. You've got a new course for specific things coming out. And in the meantime, can anybody just send you a message or a question sure. in, up above sure. in, your, in your DMs? Awesome. Awesome. So awesome to see guys. And I see a lot of new faces there. Thanks for joining us today, either live or as a replay. If you're watching this too, if you have any questions, you can send us a DM up above. You can find us on all the different medias. And, and next week, if, if anybody wants to join me, I actually have a spot available. So if anybody is out there watching and they want to come on live as well, I have one space available. So Adrian, thank you so much for coming today. Have a wonderful time. 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 Take care of your cold <laughs> and enjoy right. Poland for the rest of the time. Where are you going after this? I'm going back to Hong Kong. I haven't okay. been there for like a year and a half. So oh, boy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. A lot of changes too in that time. Yeah. A lot of changes. So <laughs> interest, yeah. very interesting. Awesome. Well, maybe while you're there, we can do another call. So hopefully, sure. yeah. Great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thanks, guys. And thanks, guys, for coming. See you soon. Have fun. Bye for now. Bye.